I'm actually wiring in the puck lights that are right above your head. <laughs> yes! It's a good time. Wow, pretty fancy. Very fancy. A little mess here right now. I mean, I am gonna have to put it down and slide it back. I'm ready. It's gonna be a big mess, so here we go. In this huge box right in front of me is our butcher block countertop. It is the day that we unpack this thing, get it all chopped up, do a ton of sanding, and then seal it with water locks. Not too much different in this process from our other build series. This is something I'm pretty much keeping exactly the same. We've used water locks every time we've done a build and we just have really fallen in love with it not only how it seals the wood, but just the amber color and the different tones that it brings out of the wood. But yeah, not too much to really talk about here. Butcher block, water locks, lots of sanding. Gotta get everything measured and cut up. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Yeah, it's definitely raining super hard now. <laughs> I got the two main countertop pieces cut right here and right here. I also got the little countertop right there, the backsplash, and also this little countertop that will fold up off of here. So now that all the main pieces are cut, it is time for me to do the cutouts, both for the sink and the stovetop. Those are the two major cutouts, but also for our little window gardens and the inset knife block. All right, this is the bottom side of the countertop. I've traced the sink. I went back and forth to the cabinet, measured it out, measured again, traced it again, then measured again, <laughs> measured a fourth time, thought about it, considered all the ways it could go wrong. Uh, and now I think I've landed in a good place. This cut specifically has to be perfect if I'm gonna be able to keep the sink cover. And I would like to keep it on this one. So let's see how it goes. Corners are super clean. This corner is super clean. Oh, thank God. Oh my God. Okay. So the next test is gonna be putting this in place on the countertop and making sure it lines up with the sink. So we're past the first really nerve wracking thing. Now we're on to the second.
day two on the butcher block countertops. Yesterday, I ran out of time after making all of my cuts. I think this is the most exciting part because it's where you really see the butcher block come to life. Mostly, I need to just finish up the edges. All the edges are just completely raw right now. So I need to sand those down as well as shape them. And then I need to make the top as smooth and soft and perfect as possible. Because as soon as that water lock sealer goes on, it's over, you're not really doing any more shaping. Starting with 80, just taking down any really big imperfections. Then I'm gonna move to 150, and then after that is the 220. We have a lot of smaller pieces in this countertop, the inset knife block, that's what this is right here. That's just an inset countertop knife block. We put our knives right through those slots, and also the hole that I drilled for our hone you can't really get those with the electric sander. So I'm gonna go in by hand and make sure all the edges are nice and smooth. And then, after all of that, it'll finally be time to put the water locks on the butcher block. The water locks gets one coat every 24 hours for four days. So the water locks will take four days to complete. This is such a lengthy process, but it's really worth it. So I did the first coat, sanding with 220. I'll do a second coat, sand, a third coat, sand, and then a final coat. I think it's gonna be like five full days of work by the time I'm actually finished. We can take the tape off and lock it. Oh, really? Oh, you got one piece. Missing one. Oh, it's stuck on there. But once it's locked in, it won't. Already. Oh my gosh. Do you have it? Yeah. It's heavy. You gotta support this back. Oh, that oh is so nice. Oh my gosh. Look at 
to that nice big food truck area in front of a big window. Every build that we do when the countertop goes in, it feels like a house. Like the countertops are the dividing factor. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks amazing, really. <laughs> it is nice. Are you ready? I'm ready. Out of here, and there she is. Oh man! And you have your kitchen. You got a nice window on both sides. You've got one when you're cooking. You've got one when you're prepping or doing dishes. It is time to dive into some of the wiring. I have pre-mounted a lot of the switches and stuff on the cabinets, and now that the cabinets are in place, they give us structure to work around. And I gotta run all these wires back to distribution. So I've pre-wired some of this stuff, but I couldn't really put it into place until we had the box. So today we're going to pull the wires through. That way, once we start putting stuff in this cabinet, the other cabinet, hopefully I don't have to pull everything out and do the work again. Well, right now the goal is to get all the wires back over to distribution. So will be underneath the couch. Release me. Okay, he's got to go back through. Okay. This is over bed. So that goes over there actually. How's it going under there, Drew? Oh my goodness. Uh, good. A little messy right now. <laughs> wow. A lot of wires. Some of them are labeled. It's just good. <laughs> but not all. Nice thing is I made all these wires up in the summer. Now I just need to pull them back to distribution. So I'm just organizing right now. Temporarily, I'll just zip tie them in before I probably put some conduit on here and then actual wire clamps. But right now I just wanna hold them in place so I can get them back to distribution, organize things on that end. And we'll have power here. Not too long, a couple days, maybe a week.
we got the main pucks on a dimmer switch. There we go. Woo! Wow, pretty fancy. Very fancy. I'm actually wiring in the puck lights that are right above your head, which are over the bed. Of course, we put those independent of all the other puck lights. So you could have just the bed lights on and you could put them nice and dim when you're getting ready to go to bed. Do we have an update back here? We got dimmable lights. That's right. We got dimmable bed area lights. Woo! Ooh, they look great. That's nice. That is nice. Starting to be well lit in here. Ooh, it's very exciting. Dark in here. You ready? I am ready. I want auto at three. The magic Ooh. of movie lighting. It's kind of like chilling movie mode or I don't know, just more ambient lighting. Lots of lighting options. The more the better. That's the way I see it. What do you think? I love it. Good. Nice. You can mix this one or these ones on dim. Kind of at like the same level and sort of balance it all out. Do whatever you want. Or if you needed more light, just pop that up. Pretty cool. If we have anything, we have lighting options. We have the pendant light, over cabinet light, lights back here, lights up here. There's a lot going on. There's gonna be light strips under the cabinets too. Yes, light strips under the cabinets. We have choices. <laughs> Today we got a lot of the first stages of the wiring done. There'll be more wiring to come in the electrical episode, but today we just wanted to get a lot of the wires behind the cabinets before all the drawers were in place, so it was a little bit easier to access them. But for now, that pretty much wraps it up, and thanks for watching, and see you next time. Of course, we put those independent of all the other puck lights, so you could have just the bed lights on, and you could put them nice and dim when you're getting ready to go to bed. Or nice and bright if you're reading a book. That's right, here at Tricor International, we strive for success. Wow. <laughs> I was just waiting to see how far that would go. Over 36 years in business.